um, I have planned a few things that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh wow, I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course, I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. Out for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. I is that so? That makes me feel relieved. I'm kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I bought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah, like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles, a wooden, wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happened to have these in my bag. I planned to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite con contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils and herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate, maybe, through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection, it's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes the switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapour begins to sprout through a small hole in the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it, pro it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need to learn about a hundred of them. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then, we can fasten the paper onto the ribbon so we get a doorway of the curtain. <clears throat> Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of, a per of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. Uh, that's really creative. I had no idea you could be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. Uh-huh. Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me? Or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels for sharing something she enjoys. Here's a marker, Finny. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbon. Uh, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully drew a, a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon from her to her desired length. Then she reaches into a bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Uh, the knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, well, embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're gonna think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know. If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. 
All right. <laughs> the thing is, I'm kind of into knives. Okay. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe? Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. Oh yeah, she's so a dom. Like, can we just like out it already? It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once more. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hand. It feels heavy, extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Finny! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small blood drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Uh, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh, what? Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. So sexy. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I. Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri, that's the mo that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it was a little weird. It took me by surprise. But I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little bit. Ah, uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Right, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Really? Did you really just do that? Now we're even. Yuri just looked at me as if I did something wrong. I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Finny. Yuri giggles shyly. Ah, uh, Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Ah, uh, I don't think I need one actually. Oh, it was a tidy cut. Look, it's already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted and we each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Mom? Yes, Pickle. Mom is on the same tack at the hospital. Do I put it in the bag? Yeah. But it doesn't have any tools. Uh-huh. Meanwhile, I'll, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. Um, it looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thing you're coming up with this, Yuri. Uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What did you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri asked me for, uh, asked me to buy, was a kit of watercolour paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each tablet in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. 
Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water, okay? If the cup fills too much, it'll be too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decide to use plastic, plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate. Oh my god, why can't I read? Nom, nom, nom. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips and then bring them back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve and pulling it back down over her arm. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets and drop them in the cup. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner. Starting with the colours for sunrise, then daytime, oh my god, then sunset, then nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational uh, quote across the banner. Then we hang on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colour across the banner to serve as a colour guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on the banner with watercolours feels a lot like art class what it used to do back then. It's relaxing. Uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like it when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple, like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes me feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are complete, quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games where simply sharing the experience with someone could make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. Oh, I'm, I'm like mixing up my voices now. It's not your fault. Uh, your face. There's a droplet of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel. Then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel, and kneel back down in front of her. Ah, here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Uh, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry, I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Uh, just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Uh... I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognise when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is this the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrap around my wrist send a tingling sensa sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was a moment ago. Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, 
I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. Really? What? What? The moment is over as soon as it had begun. Not satisfied with that. I swear to God, if we get through the whole game and they do not hook up, I'm going to be very cross. Oh. Clearly. Mm -hmm. I'm clearly not as good as I thought I was. Yuri picks up her brush again. But her movements seem clumsier. Like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore this the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots to make that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't it take a while? Well, perhaps it should be best to leave it here. Then when... And then have you bring it in in the morning. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. For you. You say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah, so you don't have any time left. I was secretly hoping we'd have some extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself. I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I was hoping there'd be more time as well. It's probably my fault for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is we've got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri look, seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounds like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this, this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up and walks out the front door, uh, thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. And then... Oh, well then. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow? Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we could do this again. Whenever you want, you could come over. Or we could go somewhere. Ah, I forgot you don't like going out much. As a stumble in my words... Yuri seem, simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, uh, Finny. Yuri takes a step closer to me. Oh, I'm, I went... I clicked it too much. Then briefly squeezes my hand, is what it said. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. S so, Yuri? Eh? Ah, hi, Finny. Sayori. Just now, we weren't... It's okay, Finny. I just stopped by to say hi. Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry, but we'll be able to... Be all to oh, blah, 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 blah. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow. So that's fine, right? Of course. Sayori beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed. Yuri, uh, Yuri hurries off. Guys, I think I might need to take a break from the reading in just a sec. And go for a little walk. Because I'm getting blurry eyes. I can't even get my words out. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Right. Had my little walk. 
Had half a cigarette. <laughs> I'm back. I'm good. I think I need to brush my hair again. I do in a bit. It's fine. It's fine. Right. Sayori. I thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, uh, well. I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was really being me was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. And how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start falling down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Finny? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. So Yuri, don't say that. It's true, Finny. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't a burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but... Sayori looks away. Uh, I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Finny. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... that I might like you more than you like me. Uh-oh. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Finny, I like you so much that I want to die. <laughs> Friend zone time. But we we like Yuri. Uh oh. That's how I feel. And and that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. Hi Haza, how you doing my lovely? I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give you. Uh-oh. Can we say that we love her, but without it being, I love you? Like, I love my friends. Like, no. Can you allow that, please? Um. I mean, this will still make her happy, right? Like, everyone likes to have a friend. Oh, well, I don't want to pretend that I love her when I don't. Okay. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back to, you, to the way they were. I... I see. So you'll reinforce a smile with an incredibly pained expression. Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? Oh my god. 
I should write a poem about this. Sayori. It's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realise that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Finny. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So... Sayori's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns and drops, turns around and drops to her knees. I'm not making that sound. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sayori looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before she turns around and running off. Sayori! I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more I could have done. The most I could do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But I'm having so much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can come for her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back the way they are. They were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend. And I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. Oh. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be one while I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparation of the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take it with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. <laughs> but no, Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Finny! You're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought I would at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. Ah, Diablo, thank you. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again, that dummy. You think on days this important she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday and I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking, but maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. You should take a little responsibility for her, Finny. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president after all. But I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? That makes me really seem like the bad guy here. Mm -hmm. But I'm the one that knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Huh? Monica's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nicely. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this would definitely help people take the club more seriously. I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly, written, uh, well, neatly printed on it. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it uh, an almost professional feel. I recognise Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practised. It's one that I haven't read before. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get... 
Get out of my head. Get out of my head before I know what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But the poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Well, that's not cool. Uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Finny, what's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem, feel, this poem feels completely different from everything else I always written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get Sayori. So, uh, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. There's no music, guys. Yeah. Where are my children? Okay. No watching mummy's screen, okay? Ah, oh, hey, thank you so much. Ah, oh, Elo, thank you. You might have said the kids out. Okay, okay. Kids, can you leave the room for a minute, please? Okay. Thank you so much. Because I think something um, grown, up, grown up is going to be on the screen and you just can't see it. Are we ready? What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Is that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want her to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. goodness what the hell what the hell is this a nightmare it has to be this isn't real there's no way that this could be real Sayori wouldn't do this everything was normal up until a few days ago that's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I'd be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. And then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession, that has to be what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this if I just spent more time with her walked her to school and gave her what I knew know she wanted out of our relationship then I could have prevented this I know I could have prevented this screw the literature club screw the festival I just lost my best friend someone I grew up with she's gone forever now nothing I do can bring her back this isn't some game where I could reset and try something different I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough and now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But, sti but I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never, 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 never. What? All done? 
someone broke the button. Someone broke the game. <laughs> Also, this isn't the end of the game. Okay. So what do I do? Do I click the crazy button? Yeah, you missed death. Do I click the crazy button? Click, you don't know. <laughs> yes, okay. The music's different. Um, guys, <laughs> my game broke. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That's. Oh, this is what he said at the start. That guy is blah, blah, blah. My neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but just kind of works because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting on high school, she would oversee more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let blah, blah catch up to me. It's an ordinary school day, like any other. Mornings are usually worse, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. Well, you haven't, so why are you lying? I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that, but I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Finny? Monica? Oh my goodness, I don't need to expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Uh, yeah, it has. It's different! Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... Welcome to Act 2. But you can't just delete her. What did you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Uh, yes, yes. About that. Quietly, nothing. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major club. She said that before. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that, clay, in that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um, it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know? Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of the members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? 
Hmm. Hey, Finny. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but... In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favour? I won't ask you to join, but... If you could at very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um... Well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, oh, awesome! You're really sweet, Finny, you know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the materials some other time. You're more important. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. <laughs>